So here, uh, this is a longer presentation about training for people who serve God. So what qualities of people who serve God? And I have under this different section. First session, section is about relationship with God. And the second session is the personal life. And then the third section is about relationship with people. And then the fourth will be attitude toward ministry. Okay. So there are four areas, I say again. First, relationship with God. Uh, personal life, his own person. And then uh, relationship with people. And then attitude toward ministry. Now, relationship with God, I will just very briefly talk about that. First, we know that everything belongs to the Lord. And He searches the heart of every single person. No one can escape His eyes. He will reward each one according to what we do. So, this attitude will change. I mean, this belief will change our whole attitude toward life and toward ministry. Now, I totally believe that. God has everything in control. I cannot run away from Him. And He has just all the blessings. If I follow Him, I'll be blessed. If I don't follow Him, then I'll have different problems. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, a structure that I... Um, a way to present these concepts, like a house. On top, the concept is, God has everything in control. No one can escape His eyes. So this is on top the top of the roof of the house. And the right hand side, when we have a good relationship with Him, you will trust in Him, love Him, and obey Him, will be blessed. That's what the Bible says. And then, second, we serve God, will be rewarded. So the positive side. And then the left side, when we don't have a good relationship with Him and we sin, there's always destruction. And then, we don't serve God, then we are not a faithful servant. And a person can lose salvation. For both of these, they can lose salvation. So, when you look at that, I say this again. Everything is in God's hand. No one can run away from His eyes. When we, have a, when we trust in Him, have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him. These are the three main things Christians should do. Trust in God, have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him in every way that includes ministry. Then we'll be blessed. And when we serve God, there will be rewards. And then when we don't trust in Him, don't have a good relationship with Him, and don't obey Him, and we sin, then there is always destruction. And then when we don't serve God, then we are lazy servant. And the worst, the person can lose salvation. For both sides, both of these on the left side. So when you believe that, now this is how I encourage people to serve God. God is a Good God, loving God, and He'll bless you. He knows your heart. He knows our heart. I have many, many testimonies of how God really blessed me and blessed the people who follow God. That, that we can see that when people follow God, they, their life, the whole lives are blessed. So we should not think we can run away from God. No one can run away from God. So that's the first concept. And then that we like God. Because He's a loving God. Now, I have this uh, uh, prayer attitude, the bread, the uh, prayer bread, remember? B R E A D. B, burdenless. Can you say it with me? Burdenless. R, relax. Relax. E, enjoy. Enjoy. A, appreciate. Appreciate. And then D, delight. Delight. So when we come to God, we Put down the burdens. We don't have to have burdens because God carries our burdens. Out, relax because God takes care of everything. I can relax. Enjoy. Like we enjoy food. Why not enjoy God? We enjoy the peace and the love and, and uh, the freedom. And then, now these three are the, our attitude. And then these two are toward God. A, appreciate. We appreciate God. We appreciate God. Then we would delight in God. So, of the five, the two most important are number three and number five. Number three is enjoy. When you enjoy, you already have put down the burdens. When you enjoy, you are relaxed already. Then you can enjoy. When you appreciate God, then you can delight in God. So the main thing are 
to uh, enjoy God and uh, delight in God. That I really like God. God is good. Hallelujah. So if in our heart or in the heart of people, they don't have the delight for God, we want to build that up. And it, it should be built up weekly. That, that whole church attitude, God is so good. God has done so many wonderful things. And for instance, for me, for my teaching, to encourage people to pray, I don't just say, when did you pray every day? How many hours do you spend praying? I don't ask questions like that. I would say, God is good. God blesses all of us. And when we pray to Him, He's very happy and he, He's sure to bless us. So we can come to Him in confidence. I always use the grace of God to encourage people. And God always sees what we do, even a cup of cold water He'll remember. So when we tell people about Jesus and pray for people and, and really walk with them in the difficult times, God is very happy. And Jesus said, you have done it to me. And so He'll reward you. So we have all reasons to serve God, right? We should, you know, we can start with the small things, just a smile to your neighbor, just to shake their hands and care about them and pray for them. God is already happy. So I always motivate people with the grace of God. And that's what the Bible says too. The Bible uses grace to encourage people. Okay? So, so and then that we have this continual relationship that we have the habit of praying and, and, and applying the Word of God. You notice that all my teachings I apply from the Bible to talk about how good God is. But I have the Bible and daily life put together. The Bible verses are applied in daily life that people can see that really the, the biblical passages can really be applied to daily life because God is practical. It's not just theoretical. Then people would say, yes, my problems can be helped by God. So this, now I'm just saying this very briefly about the relationship with God, that we delight in Him, that is based on the Word of God, and also we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So anytime we pray, we can experience Him, and we can have the anointing of the Holy Spirit to pray for people, to bless people. So, and He always reward those who serve Him. Okay, now the personal life. It's very important that we handle the personal life because if we don't handle, then we have problems and then we are building on the foundation and then we are tearing down at the same time. So it's very important for us to have a good, you know, that life itself is good. First is humble, then we say, you know, I, you heard me tell you too, I, it's not me who is good. God chose me when I was weak. God gave me teachings. God changed my life. God works in my life. And I saw all the good things. So I thank God all the time. And I, you know, I can tell you, I have failed in many ways. But God did not, you know, cut out His blessings because I failed Him. But He chose me while I was weak. And I saw it. You know, I, I have no reason to be proud of. And I'm very careful. Like when I pray for people and see people experience God, I'm very careful in my heart. I can be happy, I can thank God, but I don't ever want to say, oh, I'm powerful. Now my anointing is stronger. I don't ever want to say that in my heart. Even know when, I won't say it in my mouth, but I won't say it in my heart. When I see these people experience the love of God, I say, God, you're so good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to say, no, but the anointing on me is stronger. I don't want to ever say that. So it's very careful. That's why. When I heard about this pastor who, you know, who, who make people pretend to fall down, and also I heard some pastors push people to make them fall down. Now, I don't necessarily say that every time when they do that, it's necessarily wrong. Because there are some people, I've, I've, one pastor I know very well, he, when he prayed for people, really hard. <laughs> and then, oh, I, did, I did feel a strong power of the anointing come upon me. <laughs> but I accept him like that. But I won't pray like that for people. But he, he did that. But it, so I don't ever say that it's always wrong. But I, pre, I, I you know, prefer not to do that. And, and then sometimes, even when I'm just touching the side of the person, the person says I push it. I said, okay, I come to you, I demonstrate it. I don't even touch, just barely, barely touching or not touching. And then they were moving. I said, now you notice, I'm not pushing you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit upon them. So I, I'm very careful. Not to, you know, make people say, wow, you're great. And in my heart, I, I don't want to say that because the moment I say that, God is going to crush me. I don't want to be crushed by God. <laughs> Do you want to be crushed by God? <laughs> no. 
Do you want to waste all your effort? We should. So, okay. And then, gentle and mild like Jesus. Just Jesus said, you know, I'm gentle and mild. Learn from me. And gentle and mild means I'm patient to help people even if they don't change right away. It's okay. Some people I help would take a long time, but they start to change. And then we are very happy, very, very thankful. And I'm very, also, you know, I'm be sure to say, you know, it's not my work, it's God's work. So we don't have to be harsh on people to change people. We can be very gentle and people will still change. Just now I share with you how to confront people, that we can be gentle. And then also we handle our inner life, our inner thinking and feelings. This is many, what many people, you know, did not pay attention to. Sometimes people say, have thinking like this, oh, the ministry is difficult, people are not good, nobody really loves God, they just want us to help, they really don't come to seek God, you know. These are true in many ways. But if we have this kind of negative thinking inside, then it will affect us. At the same time, I discern the sin of people. But I was saying, that's why God sent me to bless them. And they are precious. When they're changed by God, they become precious. So I always look at it in a positive way. Always say, even though when people are weak, it doesn't matter. I just do what Jesus tells me to do. And when they're blessed, then God is glorified, and I'm happy, and this person is blessed. So I always choose to think positively. And also, uh, emotions. Now people say, this is natural. To be unhappy when you see someone you helped for so long and then he left the church. We, are, we will be unhappy, but we don't want to stay unhappy. Anything that happened, we don't want to stay unhappy. Uh, it would affect us, but we want to say, God will give it back to us. If this person leaves, he will bring us back more people if we follow God. So I always find, a, uh, to change our emotions, we need to change our thinking. There is an ABC theory on uh, emotion management. A is the activating event, the event that causes us to have emotions. B is the belief. C is the consequence. When we are sick, if the belief is that sickness is the punishment of God, then you feel bad. But you say, doesn't matter when I'm sick, God can help me, it's okay, you know, I'm weak but he's strong. And then you say, okay, no problem, no problem. And, and God knows my time, if this is time I, I'll get sick and then I'll, I'll be weak and i go to heaven, it's okay. <laughs> it's God's time is okay. The attitude, you know, if God allows it to happen, it's okay. Then the belief, then we'll have peace. Now sometimes things happen that really affect us. <coughs> then we say, I'm affected is normal. But at least I want to reduce the time that I'm affected. I want to stay in the love of God. And one way to overcome our emotions is every day we wake up. Because when we wake up, God gives us sleep to refresh ourselves. When we wake up, usually we'll feel better. So when we wake up, we can jump and then you can dance and then you can praise God. Hallelujah, God is good. Oh, hallelujah. And then we can start the day with more joy. And then day after day, it will gradually go away. But I want to say to help ourselves change feeling, thinking and feeling, which one is easier? Thinking and feeling, which one is easier to change? Thinking is easier to change. We can change and say, God helps me. God is helping me. God is blessing me. But the feelings still feel bad. Mm -hmm. And we accept that. It's okay. You know, I have many times I handle it, someone hurts me, and I say, it's okay, God will pay me back, and God will bless the person. I want to forgive the person. The person has been hurt by people, so I have compassion on the person. Now, the key to forgiveness is compassion. The person has been hurt many times. That is why he hurt people. And that's okay. So, before I slept, I felt okay. But in the middle of the night when I woke up, I felt better. Because our emotions doesn't, it's not clear right away. And, but then, it's okay. Then, when well, I woke up, I stood up, I stood up to pray. The Lord blesses me. The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can relax. 
And then soon, I noticed that, you know, it takes more time, but my emotions will be restored. Mm -hmm. and, and I noticed that, for instance, one emotion I find it harder to overcome is rushiness. Now for me, because I always have so many things to do, I have so much I can write. All this teaching I want to write <laughs> to give to different countries, different pastors. So when I'm washing dishes, I find that I rush. I want to, when I'm washing dishes, I'm not thinking about the dishes. I'm thinking about what I would do after them. <laughs> and when I have this rushing, you know, I want to rush and do something, I find that I feel pressure. So I, I, when I have this, I want to handle it. So I say, okay, when I'm Washing dishes, don't think of what I do. I just enjoy here. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So just don't think about what I do. And also I would say, God, I only can do so much. I won't push myself. I find that I cannot take any pressure. I find that no one can take any negative emotions for a long time. If anyone take, have any negative emotions for a long time, we will be hurt. We find that, I find that humans are quite weak, <laughs> including myself. I cannot have negative feelings for a long time. So I realized that, you know, that, like uh, David said in Psalm 131, the great things and the difficult things I dare not do. Mm -hmm. now, David is a very powerful man, but he would say in front of God, I'm nobody. So I just say, okay, whatever I can do, I can do. God, I can do so much. So I don't push myself. Now, I do push myself, but I don't give myself pressure. I do want to do more, but I want to do it in a relaxed way. I find that if we do anything in a pressure way, we will suffer. And then we will get sick and we can have pressure and then life becomes difficult. So that's very difficult to handle the, the thinking and the feeling. And then handle the stumbling block, money, sex, marriage, relationship, any kind of bitterness. Okay, so all this we need to handle as a person. Now, if some people break up the unity in the church generally, there is something wrong with the person's life already. Because he cannot handle his emotions, cannot handle his relationship. Therefore, his anger is brought to the church. So, instead of just saying that person has sinned, we can say this person has a lot of weakness that he cannot handle. So we think of it first like we want to bring healing to this person. We want to care about this person. When we see this problem, instead of confronting the person, we can have a meal with this person and say, uh, you know, uh, is there anything I can pray for you? Are there difficulties in your life that is hard to handle? That we, if we have this uh, attitude of blessing people and helping people to overcome the problems. Actually, I have a lot of sermons teaching on this because I think that for most people, the hindrance sometimes is not just a relationship with God. A lot of times it's the hindrance in their feelings and thinking, in their uh, relationship with the uh, spouse and the family. It's in a daily life that hinders them to go further. Some people, that, now, of course, there, it's true that some people don't really believe in God's love and following God is the best way. But many people who really want to love God, they are hindered by the family relationship and people, uh, their own self. So when you realize that, you know that it's very important to handle our life. And then on YouTube, you look for Pastor Yip, I have a series of teaching on called Joyful Victory. In the past, I call, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, 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 it's also victory, but then I, I changed the word. Now it's called joyful victory. Uh, that, that you find me have a series of teaching on how, how to handle people's problems, how to handle emotions, subconsciousness, all this, when we can handle this, and people relationship, that will help you. And online too, you can find other teachings on that. Okay, the third will be relationship with people. For people who serve God, we want to have a heart of a shepherd. Even though you are not a pastor of the church, but the heart of a shepherd means that you see someone, you want to help the person spiritually, 
You want to take, guide the person, lead the person to have the heart. You know? So Jesus said, ask Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. And then compassion. When you see the weakness of people have compassion, these people need help. They have problems, they have needs. And listening and accepting is very important. Um, it's very hard for us to listen. Uh, tomorrow afternoon I'll talk about family relationship, I'll talk about listening. Uh, we have exercise like this that uh, have people uh, have, uh, have them separate into groups of three. And one person will share something. It, just one minute long. And the other person will listen to the content, look at the facial expression, and think about the feeling behind it. And try to repeat, say it again, and describe. And then the third person, third person only do one thing, observe. What this person said and what this person uh, said. We noticed that happened many times. We asked people just to describe what happened. But this is what they, they would do. This person share, oh, I have this difficulty and I worry. And then the person respond by saying, don't worry, trust in God, pray. You have no problem. <laughs> they always teach. The first tendency is to teach. They just have no patience to listen and accept the people's feeling. Now, and then we ask them, when you listen, when you have to watch all this, what do you have to do? They will say, I really have to listen attentively. Mm -hmm. And then we ask them, do you listen like that every day? Mm -hmm. People don't usually do that. Mm -hmm. And listening is very difficult. You know, I have been trained in counseling. And then I found that I did not learn too much. <laughs> I learned more in the chaplaincy training because in that year, the leader, the teacher always, you know, have the group time and then the and then also one-to-one -one time, and then we also talk about the, the, uh, the verbatim we wrote, that the record of the visit, and then he would, the teacher would talk about how we respond to the people and uh, what, the, whether it's good or not. And in that year, that we learned to pay attention to the people. And I had two teachers in that one year. In the second year, second part, the teacher used a method very useful. He told us when we respond, we write down verbatim. Instead of writing down comments, he wanted us to write down what we were doing. For instance, we were responding to the feeling, we were teaching, we were sidetracking, we were sharing, we were condemning. We tell us to write down. And we find it very helpful. And from then on, when I listen to people, I'm thinking, what is he doing? Is he sharing? Is he teaching? What is he doing? And I find that it helps me a lot to distinguish what people said. And so that's, those are exercises very helpful. But some people say, isn't it true that we should first teach people? One time I, a pastor asked me to counsel a couple. Uh, and I asked the pastors to be with me because I want to demonstrate. And then the couple, uh, the couple had marriage problem and had problem with God. They haven't come to the church much. And then I listened. I listened both the husband and the wife and tried to, because what I want to do, I want to want them to lead them to talk about their life, what are the problems they're facing, what are the difficulties. And then they were talking, but the pastor sitting there very quickly went into teaching. And, and then he said, you should forgive your wife. And the wife should love your husband. And then uh, you should go to church. And then she, he kept talking. It's not just two sentences. He was talking. And then I noticed that the couple, when he was talking, the couple just bent down the head. And then he would talk, talk, talk. And then, you, then, the, 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 and then the couple just didn't listen. I, I mean, the head would bend down. And then after he finished, the pastor finished, and then I asked him again. Okay, tell me what happened when you talk with your wife, and when uh, what happened uh, when you had some argument? What exactly happened there? And then they tell me, they tell me what happened. 
And after the session, I discussed with the pastor, I have to be very careful because I was confronting the pastor. But I have to be very careful. So I asked him, uh, have you noticed what happened in the session just now? And then he told me, I have to teach them. And I said, yes, that's very right. You have to teach them. But have you noticed what happened to them? Uh, and I, I, you know, gradually guide the pastor to say, you know, you want them to go there, then they were there. And you tell them, forgive. Uh, you tell them, talk to each other, listen to each other, and uh, go to church. But they're not there yet. And do you think they would do it? And at that point, he's, he's think, he still thinks uh, we should teach mostly in the counseling. But then, the next day, he changed. He told me, what you said, I found it is right. What happened was, the night, you know, I think God moves his mother to do it. His mother called him. And then his mother said something like, son, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to take care of the family, take care of your body, take care of that. And then he, he told his mother, mother, I'm an adult, I'm mature, I'm a pastor, I know all these things. And then he told me, now I realize when someone keep teaching me what are my feelings. <laughs> now I realize that when people listen to me and listen to my feelings and respond to my feelings, and that person can change me. Now the concept of counseling is like this. I listen to the person, I try to break down the reasons why he behaved like that. What is the problem between him and his wife? What are the way of interaction? Where it went wrong? When he got angry, why he got angry, and how did the wife respond? All this I try to break down and listen. And then I try to explore what are some possible ways. Because I know I cannot bring them to that point. I have to bring them up one step to realize the problem. The next step to realize that being gentle doesn't mean you cannot change the other person. And how to listen. So I lead them one step by step. Counseling means those people are not willing, they're not at that step yet. You want to guide them. Now, if someone asks me, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit? This person doesn't need counseling. This person just needs teaching. How, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I can tell them right away. But if the person is not willing to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then I have to guide them. Why are you not willing? What hinders you? Then I have to be counseling. Actually, as church workers, we need to counsel a lot. Anyone who comes to the church, I don't want to forgive my husband. I don't want to believe in Jesus. I don't want to pray. You just tell them, pray. <laughs> it's not going to change him. You want to change them. Why? Why don't you want to pray? What do you think about praying? What is your concept of praying? So he tell him, tell, uh, there's no use praying, no use. I don't feel anything. Okay? You don't experience anything. So what first thing we look at the scripture, the Bible does say he can give us peace and take away our burdens. Uh, can we believe in those promises? Now, let us pray together and see what God does. And then let him experience God taking away his burden. So you see, God works in your life. So you see, prayer can be enjoyable, can help you. So we can think of prayer as an enjoyment, a way to get strength. And when we know God is good. So that's how we have the ability to listen and to guide people. And this is very important. Even people who damage the church, sometimes they have reasons to do that. Sometimes they've been hurt by people. Actually, I've been to different places, countries. Very often the pastor would bring me up this problem. Okay, this person is damaging the church. And then when I listen to this person, this person says some other people are hurting them. And sometimes even the pastor is hurting them because the pastor did not listen. The pastor has his way of handling things. Now, I have to be very careful because I have to ask for permission to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. The pastor give me permission, then I can su give suggestion that sometimes the pastor is too authoritarian and he thinks that that way the people will listen, but actually the people might not listen. So the pastor, uh, if he willing to you know, to be listened, to listen to the people, to adjust to their needs. And now, he's still the leader.
But being a leader doesn't mean that he's authoritarian. Then the Bible talks about submit to one another, not just everyone submit to him. He also submit to the people and listen to the people and respond to the people. Then more people will follow him. A leader like that have more followers. And some people tell me, because I'm so gentle, they want to follow me. They want to. They, they see that following me, they feel good. They feel being lifted up, being treasured. And so the people, you know, they, they treasure being uh, serving with me. Okay? And then uh, about uh, relationship with people, another point very important, don't insist on our ideas. Mm -hmm.